This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and I'll share all the deets on that in a little while. But for now, let's talk about Jordan Peele's second film, titled Us. Us comes on the heels of Get Out, and while I personally didn't find the film very memorable, clearly I'm a moron, because it was one of the most successful horror films of the year. Peele even won an Oscar for writing the best original screenplay of 2017. So, Peele's second film, Us, was greatly anticipated by audiences. The plot of Us, and I will be getting into heavy spoiler territory, from now on can essentially be summarized like this. There are clones of civilians living in underground spaces underneath the United States. These clones, known as the Tethered, were made by the government to control the citizens on the surface. The experiment was a failure, so the government simply abandoned them underground, and over the decades, the Tethered lost their minds. They all went mad down here. But then Red shows up on the scene. Red organizes the Tethered and plans a mass invasion of the surface. Their goal, aside from killing their surface doubles, is to recreate the 1986 Hands Across America event to show that even those marginalized by society and given no opportunities are still capable of doing great things. At the end of the film, we learn that Red was actually born on the surface and her Tethered, now known as Adelaide, switched with her when they were children. The Tethered successfully invade the surface and recreate the Hands Across America event. The main family manages to escape, though it was a very close call, as their fate was ultimately decided by a knife fight between Adelaide and Red. They escape south towards Mexico. Watching this, I couldn't help but think that the plot was very convoluted and made no sense, but also that the family could have survived the situation with significantly fewer trials by combat. There are, in fact, easier ways they could have beaten this situation, and as usual, I discovered this by googling a bunch of inane facts and figures, most of which have put me on government watch lists. The last solution on this list would completely stop the Tether's invasion of the surface without any loss of life. So welcome to my video blog of how to beat the Tethered from us. I call it the blogging. But before we can get to those solutions, first we need to explicitly consider the conditions of the scenario to figure out exactly what obstacles need to be overcome to beat the Tethered from us. Now I am going to attempt to explain exactly what the conditions of the scenario are, but my god is this going to be a monumental effort because this movie just does not make sense. This movie makes less sense than the birthday t-shirt ads that Facebook keeps showing me. Jude man, you know my name, not my story. You see my smile, not my pain. <laughs> you notice my cuts, not my scars. You read my lips, not my mind. This one is my favorite though. Uh, sorry, I was already taken by a freaking awesome June guy. He's a bit crazy and he scares me sometimes. Wait, so this is a domestic abuse situation, right? But I am his queen. He's my whole world. Flirt with me and the the beast inside him will awake and they'll never find your body. Holy shit. I had no idea that as someone born in June, I was an unstable spouse abusing murderer. Thanks, Facebook. The film glosses over some very important details that are either not explained or make no sense, so I'm just going to list all the logistical problems this movie has so that we can get past them and focus on the conditions. <laughs> But the worst plot hole of the movie is entirely unforgivable. Where is all the rabbit poop? Do you have any idea how often a rabbit poops? The average rabbit poops 100 small pellets a day, and yet these floors are completely spotless. I can forgive the rest of these problems, Mr. Peel, but rabbits without rabbit poop is one step too far, my friend. The lack of rabbit droppings in this movie is a complete farce, and I shall not have it! So what are the specific conditions the Wilson family is facing? First, let's 
let's talk about location. The plot takes place in Santa Cruz, a small city just south of San Francisco. The cabin that the family stays at appears to be on a lake because every shot shows land on the other side. The water is also far calmer than the ocean usually is. And finally, these water scenes were all filmed on Lake Gregory, just east of Los Angeles. There is no good candidate near Santa Cruz for which lake the cabin exists on, so the lake and cabin are assumedly fictional. What's confusing is that they drive into Santa Cruz from the east at the start of the film, as the water is on the left. But when they're trying to escape, they drive into Santa Cruz again, but this time from the west. Their cabin and the lake are somewhere near Santa Cruz, but because of this, we can't pin down exactly where they are. It was important to figure out if the cabin was actually on the ocean, because if it were, the family could have escaped on the boat. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Now let's talk about the tethered themselves. They share the soul of the person on the surface, which gives the tethered some vague psychic knowledge about them. They seem to know the location of their double, for example. They also possess the same skill set. Gabe can drive the family boat, and as a result, so can Abraham. The twins are very acrobatic, and so are their tethered. This even applies to physical strength and cardiovascular fitness, as the daughter's tethered can run just as fast as she can. The tethered are unable to speak English, but do communicate in a way suspiciously similar to Michael Key. The tethered are somewhat resistant to pain, but they're still vulnerable to a mortal wound. Every single one of them is armed with a pair of golden scissors. Because of the scene where Pluto attempts to kill the family with fire, we know that they won't exclusively use scissors if they find a better way to kill you. Speaking of killing you, the tethered do seem exclusively interested in killing their surface double. When Umbre chases Zora, they get interrupted by a mustache. The mustache. But Umbre initially ignores him. Only when he really bothers her does Umbre kill him. This is illustrated again when the tethered homeless man kills his double. Afterwards, he doesn't bother anyone else, but simply waits for the rest of the tethered to form the line. This suggests that the tethered are only interested in killing their surface double and won't attack anyone else unless they interfere somehow. Their goal is specifically to replace the person on the surface, not wage war against all surface people in general. Their secondary goal is to recreate the Hands Across America event. And at the end of the film, they do appear to succeed. Their success gives us a good approximation of how many tethered there actually are. The average wingspan of an adult human is roughly 5 feet and 7 inches. If you take a horizontal line across the United States starting in Santa Cruz, which is where the West End starts, the distance across the United States is approximately 2,500 miles, wherein the rise and gain in elevation is mostly negligible. Using these numbers, it would take at least 2.36 million adults in order to hold hands across the contiguous United States, so there are at least that many tethered. Since they appear to have completed the Hands Across America event by morning, and their first goal was to kill their surface double, that means the tethered have killed at least 2.36 million people by the end of the film. The footage of the line seems to indicate that all the remaining tethered are required to form it, as the Wilson family don't encounter any of them on the streets of Santa Cruz, nor do they see any on their drive down to Mexico. The tethered invade the surface somewhere within a 12 hour period, but not simultaneously. The first tethered we see is the homeless man on the beach who kills his double and then heads for the start of the line, sometime past 2.30pm. I thought you guys said 2.30, where's the efficiency man? The main tethered family emerges at 11.11pm and several hours after that, the tethered of the Tyler family strikes. Although Adelaide calls the cops and they say they're 14 minutes away, Okay, let's call the cops. I did. They're 14 minutes away. What? 14 minutes? They never do arrive, which indicates that either the tethered eliminated the cops before they could get there, or the cops got sidetracked by either 911 calls caused by the tethered. Either way, most of the tethered attack within this 12 hour time frame. The news report they watch seems to indicate that by the time they've dispatched the tethered Tyler family, the invasion is well underway, and by morning, they've completed the Hands Across America event. That's a comprehensive breakdown of the conditions of the scenario that the 
Wilson family is facing. Now let's move on to the solutions, is what I would be saying were it not for this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. I was personally interested in learning how to animate, so I took a class on how to use Adobe Animator. Unfortunately, it crashed so hard that somehow it rolled back my operating system to Windows XP, and then that crashed. What the fuck? This, this isn't even a Dell. What have you done, Adobe? So instead I took a class on how to use Moho, which is much more stable, and eventually I was able to make Gary put his hands in the air like he just don't care. I'm also interested in taking Fraser Davidson's class on simple character animation. I'm hoping to incorporate more animation into future projects, and I could not have done it without the classes on Skillshare. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial for anyone who clicks the link in the description box, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. They're helping to support this channel, so please give them some love by clicking the link below. There are only a few possible solutions to us, and this is mostly due to the surprise and speed of the attack. Millions of tethered invade the surface in the span of a few hours with no warning whatsoever. Most would be killed as they slept, or before they had a real chance to fight back. Even if they were awake, I expect that coming face to face with someone who looks just like you would be distracting enough that most people would let their guard down upon encountering their tethered. Oh my god, it's a clone! Now neither of us will be virgins! The Wilson family is the exception, however. Red doesn't want to just kill them, she wants them to suffer, to show them that the tethered are just as competent as they are. Because of this, the Wilsons are able to trick or evade Red's family and escape onto the boat. As far as I'm concerned, this is the first time in the movie that the Wilson family has the ability to make informed decisions. They're not aware of what's happening until Red's family already has them cornered, but due to a series of very lucky circumstances, they all make it out alive and regroup at the boat. So what action should they take at this point? In the film, they go for the obvious move, which is to go to their friend's house for help. But since the cops never arrived at their house after they called them, they should know that some larger event is happening. So knowing this, what should the Wilson family do? I think the solution that makes the most sense is a paper fortune teller. The tethered have some kind of psychic link to the surface people that lets them hone in on their location when they invade. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it works immediately or that they know precisely where they are. The Wilson family run to the Tyler's house, and after they defeat the tether they find there, they run into Umbre. But why does only Umbre show up? If Red knew exactly where they were, why didn't she and Pluto come too? Instead, Red and Pluto set up an ambush for the Wilsons in the event that they try to escape Santa Cruz. My guess is that either the Tether don't know exactly where they are, or the information they get from the surface people is delayed by some amount of time. Umbre showed up alone because Red told her to go find out if the Wilson family was at the Tylers. The solution around their psychic connection, therefore, is to be unpredictable. If the Wilsons, having escaped Red's family on the boat, made a paper fortune teller and wrote down four places to hide, such as hide under a dock, run into the forest, hide in someone's boat, or circle back and try to get in their own car, they could probably evade Red's family until morning, at which point all of the tethered would have joined the line and they can steal any car and escape to Mexico. They just need to evade Red's family for about 10 hours and then they're home free. If they keep their location unpredictable, they should be able to escape, and it would be a lot less risky than having to kill the tethered in the Tyler's house and then having to fight the remainder of Red's family. Of course, there are a few problems here. The lake scenes were filmed at Lake Gregory, and if we assume that the lake they're on has the same dimensions, then they're in trouble, because Lake Gregory only has a circumference of around 2 miles. Red's family could still find them by sheer luck, since two miles isn't a lot of distance to cover. Escaping into the woods would also be very risky as the houses around the lake are very tightly spaced, meaning they'd be in danger of being spotted by other tethered. They also don't know that it'll be safe to escape by morning because they don't know about the Hands Across America event at this point in the movie. But as long as they hide for a minimum of 10 hours, if they choose to escape any time after that, they will be safe. Despite these problems, I would argue that the paper fortune teller solution is much more risk averse than what the Wilson family does in the film and is therefore a better course of action. But an even better solution than a paper fortune teller would be another
another paper fortune teller. Except this time, instead of hiding until morning, stealing a car and escaping to Mexico, the family should instead drive to Camp Parks or ISC Alameda. It just so happens that the movie takes place in the same area as Bird Box, and as we found out in the last video, there are two active military bases near San Francisco. The problem most people faced when the tethered invaded the surface is that the tethered had the element of surprise, because most people would be asleep at this time. But military bases always have personnel on guard. They are also armed with guns, not scissors. You know, I swear that I don't try to do this, but in most cases, horror movies can be beat by either finding someone with a gun or getting one yourself. The point I'm trying to make is that if the tethered attempted to attack an active military base, they wouldn't stand a chance. Therefore, the safest and easiest place that the Wilson family could go isn't Mexico, it's Camp Parks. It's only an hour away from Santa Cruz. The one thing I didn't address in my big list of problems is that if the Wilson family is trying to get to Mexico, they'll need to get past the line. In this shot, the ocean is on the right. Since Santa Cruz faces south towards the ocean, this means that they're west of the line. In order to reach Mexico, they need to get east of the line. At the end of the film, they seem to be driving to Mexico without any issues, so assumedly that means they actually drove through the line and mowed down the tethered with their car at some point. It makes driving to Camp Parks instead of Mexico an even better idea since they won't need to risk playing Red Rover with the people in the red suits. Once the Wilson family reaches Camp Parks, they should be completely safe and won't be considered a threat by the base as they're not wearing the red jumpsuits of the tethered who have assumedly been attacking them all night. And while we're on the subject, the tethered may have succeeded in mass murder and recreating the Hands Across America event, but in no way does that mean they're going to survive on the surface for very long. Once again, they are armed with scissors, and they have just accidentally declared war on the American military. Did you know that the US military has 1.3 million active duty troops and another 865,000 on reserve? That means that the estimated 2.36 million tethered armed with scissors and wearing bright red jumpsuits are now going to have to fight 2.1 million American soldiers supported by the most bloated military industrial complex on the planet. Planet. Keep in mind that the government created the Tethered, so they have a vested interest in eliminating them. I would be amazed if the Tethered survive on the surface for even three weeks. Regardless of what the Wilsons do, the Tethered will not be a threat for very long, but in the short term, their best option would be to head to the one place that is completely safe from the Tethered, and it's only an hour's drive away. To confirm this, I actually called Camp Parks to see if they would agree. Unfortunately, most of the questions I asked them were classified for security reasons. How many trained military personnel are like permanently stationed at Camp Parks? Um, so that goes against our operational security, so I can't tell you that. <laughs> However, they did have this to say. Uh, and in, in the movie, the main characters try to get to Mexico as the way out. But to me, that makes no sense because why would they go through the people when they should just head north and head for the closest place of safety, which to me, Camp Park sounds like a really great destination. That is a realistic assumption. That's pretty much what would happen during any kind of natural disaster or anything like that. People would flock to the nearest government facility seeking help. So mm -hmm. it's a valid assumption. <laughs> But the best solution by far would completely avoid the invasion of the Tethered and would end the crisis before it even begins. As already mentioned, Adelaide, the main character of the film, is in fact one of the Tethered, but she switched with her surface double, Red, when they were children. Therefore, Adelaide is completely aware of the Tethered and that her surface double is living amongst them. She even tells her husband about Red in this scene. My whole life, I've... So Adelaide has an in its sense that Red is coming for her. There are other things she says too, things that she shouldn't actually know. Gabe, they've been planning this. They have the upper hand. How does she know they've been planning this? And how does she know to immediately call the police the second Red's family appears outside their house? Why does she insist that they leave before dark, the night when the invasion is going to take place? We leave before dark. 
What I'm suggesting here is that Adelaide is still gaining information through the tether. She is one of the tethered, so it makes sense that she should know what the original is up to. And if Adelaide knows that Red is coming for her, it makes sense for her to kill Red way before any of this happens. She says that she has felt her whole life that Red is coming for her. So if she knows this, why did she never preemptively kill Red? It would be incredibly easy for her to procure guns and ammunition on the surface, go down to the underground at Santa Cruz and kill Red. This would have solved all of Adelaide's problems and inadvertently would have stopped the invasion too because without Red, the invasion never would have happened. As long as she kills Red before Red plans for the invasion, the Tethered never would have attacked. The entire situation would be entirely avoided. So Adelaide just needs to find Red and kill her. Even if the Tethered tried to protect Red, remember, they are armed with at most scissors. Adelaide could buy a full suit of armor and an AK-47 and just go to town down there, especially in those narrow hallways. If Adelaide is able to kill Red, the crisis could be entirely averted. But if you think that you have a better idea, if you think you have an even better way to beat the tethered from us, please let us all know about it in the comments below. This video is made possible by my amazing patrons, and if you want to be as cool as them, head on over to patreon.com slash filmherald. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald.